Again, cerulean blue, very calm, very quiet. You can see there's a bit of that burnt scarlet on the brush, so it's already coming out in a slight gradation in the sky back there. Thicker out of the well. Go back into the upper part of the sky and blend that in. Again, these nice soft gradations. Cerulean blue initially. You can see it's a little bit thicker and darker. It's going to blend back there at the horizon a little bit. That's okay. It makes the horizon look hazy. And with the side of my brush and a very light stroke, I'm going to start pulling that color down into here. And you can see the texture of the cold pressed paper creates some sparkle there, a little bit of white sparkle. And that's what we want to create a sense of a little bit of wave action, a little bit of white water in there, back in there. Now we may cover some of this later. By the way, I'm curving this around to sort of follow the shore. And we may cover some of those white spots later, but for now we're going to leave as many really as appear. Strokes are very, very wet, even though it looks like dry brush. It's not dry brush at all. It's actually quite wet. It's just that I'm letting the brush, the combination of the brush technique and the texture of the paper create those white areas, the areas that look like, again, they might be white caps. And back in here where there would probably be some reflections of This is a way you can create pretty quickly and simply a sense of reflections in, in water, really, whether it's ocean water, bay, water. And if, the, if the brush is too dry, it's not going to water onto the paper. So same thing back here. And that's really our first step, to get in the sky, the water, some indication of what eventually will just be reflections of those dark rocks in the background. And then really that first step is finished. So get your painting to this level and then go ahead and dry it and then go on to the next step. And again, first of all, to the right side of most of the faces of this rock. Down through here and there. A little bit up here. Here, this is a dark value area, and this color is not dark, but one of the th things that a, and burnt scarlet together, and again, I'm going to mix and mingle these in, especially right at the edge, letting the darker color mix and mingle with the, and it's a color change that allows me to, again, get something that looks a little bit different in some of these areas. Back with the darker mixture. I'm using a fairly light, large brush here, but uh, if I use the side down here, especially at the bottom edge of the rock, I might get some of that rough brush looking work that I have out in the water itself. And that gives me a texture that at least gives us the idea of some ruggedness to these rocks, that rocks that are kind of rough on their outer contours. Orange, I want to let it blend in. This is supposed to be more or less the beach. Pick up some of my cerulean mixture and get that up on these upper faces as if maybe there's a little bit of water wetness left over from the tide or rain into this area and this is that cerulean mixture and again side of the brush get some rougher edge that's beach down there I'll get to that in a second 
trying to blend those in pretty well. Back with for the darker mixture, another face of another rock. For this set of rocks down here, and again, I'm making them very dark. And I'm going to do that on some of these faces here, just to show that they're really facing away from the light. Not catching much light at all, either certainly not direct light and not even any really bounced light. With my smaller round, some cerulean into that darker mixture, and I'm going to use that for the beach down here. And again, I'm using the side to get a little bit of sparkle right at the edge of the water, and then I'm going to fill that in. And while it's still wet, add a little bit of warmth, a little bit of that orange. Working really fluid like this allows this sort of adjustment to your paintings. And I'm going to start with my warm color, my brighter orange, but with a lot of water, so it's not too bright in this case. It's farther back in space. And now it's catching a lot of that warm light. It's not quite as bright because it's farther away from us. And then I just go to my palette and I get some of this lighter neutral, lighter gray. And I let it mix and blend into that warmer orange that I started with. And I try to, again, get a little bit of a rough edge at the bottom by dragging my brush lightly across the surface of the paper. So this is a technique that really combines the brush and what the brush will do with the paper and actually the texture of the paper and what it can help you do. And I sort of bump that up there a little bit to change the direction of that slope. But I think that what I've got there is really all I want um, I'm, and I'm going to leave it exactly the way it is. I mentioned that we didn't do this rock here. We can go ahead and put that in. And again, it's sitting down where it's not really catching direct sunlight. So I'm going to put this in. I'm going to leave a little white edge right there where it overlaps the other rock, just for the moment. There's a little bit back here. And in the drawing, I indicated some other bits of rock sitting down in the water as if really the rocks that are out here are part of the rock that group of rocks that forms the land over there in the background. And some more of that darker color to darken certain areas of the rock faces just to give some sense that there is actually change in the planes, you know, a change from one part of the rock face to another. Again, I'm using the side of the brush, letting that ride over the texture of the paper and give me some indication of not only different faces of the rocks with less light on them in this case, they're more in shadow, but also texture to help reinforce that idea that the rocks are rugged and create the sense that there are individual 
rocks and rock faces back here. Trying to keep rougher edges in most places for that sense of texture. Don't get too troubled with this. Um, just make them simple. These different faces, rock faces that you're creating, just make them simple. Try to just picture a rock and and I'm going to start that with some really fluid cerulean, believe it or not. I'm going to leave a little bit of white sparkle right in there. This cast shadow is actually quite fluid, even though it's, it's really small marks. I'm going to do that here as well. Now, I'm keeping it nice and light and fluid, and that's so that they cat shadow stay nice and transparent. Or the cerulean. And in this case, creating kind of the edge of the shadow back here, of all these rocks over here to the right, which really work their way off the edge of the paper. And again, to go back and create that sense that there's maybe some waves that are darker now in this darker area of water. Burnt scarlet. Some indications out, out here of wave action, wave movement. Where there's some white sparkle like that, you can include it in these brush strokes. Again, if you use the tip of the brush, let it glide over the paper, you get some rough looking marks that kind of look like waves and a little bit of sparkle in the waves, a little bit of maybe white water in the waves themselves. Uh, maybe there's a crevice that comes across the face of this rock and then down the side. Sometimes they, the crevices split and when I do that, notice that I followed essentially the direction of the face of that rock. In this case, I'll bring one down like this. Again, maybe it splits, I'll drop it down. And this is a great way to add texture and interest, but the other thing that it does really is allow you to show the contours of those rocks. Maybe there's one coming down this way on this rock. And actually as I'm saying that I feel like I have this crack running here across the top of this rock. I'm going to run one essentially in the other direction. One that goes down this way. Feels like that should be there. When I say it feels like it, that's hard to teach, hard to coach. It's really a matter of sensing it and it takes a little bit of experience to be able to do that. To understand when something needs to be added, something that's not there needs to be added. Trust yourself, but also again work slowly and carefully. Do a little bit, come back in and do a little bit more if it seems like it needs to be there, etc.